The second house plays a role similar to the first house in that it is fundamental to one's self. But in, in, in the first house, there's more of a self-concept thing going on. In the second house, self is more defined by purpose and values. So now you've got your honest there. And, and I, I think Taurus is going to take Uranus in a way very different than Aries did. It's a, it's a cooler, feminine, uh, more subtle, um, more aesthetically pleasing. That's always good. Beauty. Um, aesthetically pleasing vibe. And in addition, the body is involved. So the first house is more like I am. But the second house is, this is my body. And I can think of few influences, except for maybe Chiron coming in nine years in Taurus that would call uh, more radical and rapid attention to physicality than Uranus in Taurus. The second house is also about your values. And the indication of Uranus and Taurus in the second house is that you're due for an update, an upgrade of your values. That little thing on the corner of the Macintosh screen keeps lighting up saying, you want to upgrade your software? And you're like, ah, no, but what's it going to do when I upgrade my software? Well, uh, then there are times when the software updates automatically. Uh, th that's what's going to happen with Uranus and Taurus. So you're, you're, you're going to be upgraded and updated automatically, and you're going to need to make new decisions and uh, go through you know, interesting changes and a process of, of growth and of becoming simultaneously involving your, your concept, your idea of who you are, but then also the reality of who you are as described by what is important to you, what matters the most. And you might find that you're going to be doing some experimenting in what matters the most because your honest is always about an experiment, which means gaining of experience. It, it could well be an unexpected uh, experiment. Um, you, you need to take a new approach to money uh, and and plan for rises and falls of fortune, which you can ride out effectively. Remembering that Warren Buffett, I've read, le leaves his um, leaves his m money in in a particular stock for twenty years on average. He just le parks it where he thinks it's going to win, and 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 lets it grow. Um, with Uranus in, in Taurus in the second, you may be more inclined to take chances. And so what I suggest is, if you're in a position to do so, that you take chances with only a portion of your wealth, maybe a third of your wealth, and, and leave two-thirds in cash or in, in something that is st stable and, and, and long-term, and you get your yayas out playing with your TD, Ameritrade account, or whatever you might want to do, but only basically limiting your losses. So let's start with Chiron on the, on the 10th house. This, first of all, drops you into a spotlight. Uh, with all your secrets kind of out, out, here with bars retrograde uh, where people can maybe see them, you, you might not like the feeling of, of being in a spotlight, but th this is a spotlight that is, is necessary for the leadership role that you are being groomed to take. And, and there, are, there are challenges involved and there's an initiation involved with this Mars retrograde uh, in, in the eighth house because it is shifting something of your relationship to every group you could even ever imagine from your family to your coworkers, to your friends, to your community, to, to your, your larger society and the patterns that form uh, and, and that are difficult to break. And 
um, Chiron on the 10th puts you in the position um, I, I, I'm trying to not say the words thought leader because <laughs> it's like it's so fucking stupid of of the example of one who leads by differing leads by differing and therefore when you differ you are leading when you stand up against the the prevailing paradigm you are leading when you uh, go against the majority you are leading when you refuse to conform which you're doing a lot of these days you are leading when you have your own understanding of reality you are leading chiron on the 10th is is putting you in a in a leadership role and additionally specifically to the effect of being a maverick a maverick is someone who does things differently because it's the right way to do things or the ethical way to do things. So the, I think the guy's name was Samuel Maverick, refused to brand his cattle. He thought it was cruel. So all the unbranded cattle belonged to Samuel Maverick. And th then the word maverick became a, th a thing. You're a maverick. You don't, you, you won't do what everyone else does. Chiron's first keyword is maverick. You have Chiron in the 10th house. Your power comes from being a maverick now at this point in, in your life. So notice the themes repeating themselves. The, 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 there is clearly a maverick theme of Mars retrograde in Aquarius. That, that you, you couldn't be more maverick than going against the grain of society with Mars and Aquarius. Uranus rebels against the status quo. And so in many ways, Taurus is the status quo. I mean, when, when I need help maintaining the status quo in some way, or figuring out the, the way things should be, I usually go to a Taurus. Taurians are very good at making keeping things right, stable, consistent, persistent, and doing them well. You happen to have this sign in your house of deep, committed, bonded relationships. And so one of the reasons why Libra is the sign of relationships, kind of archetypally, is, is partly about itself, that it's the seventh sign, it's the opposite Aries, the sign of self, and it's the sign of, um, of, of uh, you know, we are, we, we sh share kind of a common reality, but it's aided and abetted by having Taurus on the eighth, which which gives a kind of a um, a profound um, sense of commitment, and then along comes Mr. Uranus and says, "Uh, well, no, not necessarily. Commitment is going to have a new idea, a new concept, a new meaning." Hmm. That, that could be exciting. It, it could be frightening. What it really means is that because Uranus is the planet of inventions, and, you know, while, while I'm saying that, I, would just, I would want to just show you one of my favorite examples of, of Uranus being the planet of inventions. I know I, I mentioned this. I'm always, th I'm always threatening to, to do this chart. In, in the flight of the first, chart of the first airplane flight. See that? Uranus is conjunct the sun, and the moon is about to make a conjunction to the sun and Uranus. There's about to be a new moon conjunct Uranus. And two guys, two guys out of the beach, flipped a coin, and Wilbur, I guess, got to fly the airplane around, and people flew around up in the sky. And Uranus was there. New moon, conjunct Uranus. 
So in that and other ways, Uranus is the sign of inventions. And here is the perfect symbol of reinventing the concept of commitment in a way that works for you, whatever that means for you. And it will help liberate you from commitments that are too stayed, too stable, too fixed, uh, unable to respond to your creativity. Um, potentially, commitments where there's not enough room for other people, whether those other people are, are other lovers, whether, whether those other people are friends, whether those other people are acquaintances, whatever they might be, Uranus in the eighth is going to help you make room for other people and for an expanded concept of what it means to be committed. So you, 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 you can be sensitive to your need to invent and create something for yourself that works for you. The placement of Aquarius in your chart, in the solar chart, is the second house. And, and by the way, the, 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 the basic meanings of the houses uh, remain the same no matter what house system you're using. Um, what, you know, whatever, it's Coke Placidus, Reggio Montanus, uh, whatever, whole sign houses, red uh, uh, top eccentric, whatever it might be. Uh, or in this case, the solar chart. So the second house represents values. It represents your priorities. It, it is, in a sense, uh, your spiritual bank account. So it serves a number of functions. Uh, it is also your available resources. And, um, and, and, and like you might think of it as uh, ca resources and cash on hand in, in, the, in the great many ways that that uh, can manifest. Okay. Now, having Aquarius on the second house, that is to say, the sign Aquarius, what I mean when I say that is that, that using this solar houses system, each sign counts as a house. So all of Aquarius counts as your second house. And one of the things about Aquarius uh, is, and it is, again, not noted in, in many astrology books, it is occasionally noted by the observant astrologer uh, that Aquarius is the sign of groups, and the first group is the family. And we learn to navigate group dynamics by navigating the family constellation. What then happens is that, uh, that typically the group constellations that emerge around us through life bear some resemblance to our family. Uh, this, this happens in, in group therapy, for example. I'm going to just check that I've got audio. It happens in, 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 in group therapy, for example. Good, nice audio there. I'm not, I'm not wearing these silly headphones. And th th that when a group manifests around us, by some mysterious means, people start to take on the roles that remind us of people in our family. And, and it is important to have this process be a conscious process so that you recognize uh, who, who is who and what is what when, when you can. It can often be a creative process to do this. It can be, um, you have to use some imagination and sometimes, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's just like, that bitch reminds me of my mother. That bastard reminds me of my father, whatever the case may be. And you, you, you know it and you see it, or that bratty person reminds me of my sister, whatever it might be. But more significantly, in the case of the second house, the, the, the central issue would seem to be the, how the value system of the group, Aquarius, influences your personal value system, the second house. So notice I took a theme of a sign, Aquarius, groups, and family, and the theme 
of a house, the second, and put them together. And what we have is an overlay where the family or the values of the group shape and influence your personal values. Mm -hmm.